Hi friends, it's Carly and I'm back again with another review. So before I get started on this next Retro Spider-Man figure, I just have to say thank you so much to my subscribers. I woke up this morning and saw that I have 801 subscribers on my channel and I'm so excited and I don't really know what to do with that information except for just to say thank you so much for being a part of this hobby with me. I appreciate all of your comments. You guys tell me when you, I do a good job, you correct me when I make mistakes, you like my content, you share it on your social media platforms like I'm just over the moon and I'm having such a great time this is my hobby and what I love to do anyway so as long as you're enjoying them I'm gonna keep making them moving on to the rest of the schedule we've got two more retro spider-man figures and four Marvel Legends figures which includes the sugar man bath himself that's six days of videos every single day and there will be one day in there with two videos uh, because I'll be doing the nerdbot.com article all of that will be finished and I will have received the next surprise series of figures. So this train is rolling and I don't see any reason to stop any anytime soon, but make sure that you guys have your notification bell turned on because I do also have a full-time job. So although I'm able to get a video posted and ready every single day, I don't know necessarily always what time it's gonna go up just depending on when I can get back to the computer and upload. Sometimes the internet is slow. Um, so if you have your notification bell turned on, you'll always be notified when I post Post my daily video. With all of that housekeeping out of the way, we can get right into our next figure, and I am really, really excited to talk about this one, you guys. Today we're looking at Matt Murdock, Daredevil. So as we take a quick look, for those of you who don't know this bit of information, uh, Daredevil and Spider-Man, Matt Murdock and Pete, are like best bros. Like they're really good friends, they team up a lot, they're actually, they actually get along really well. I mean there's even a time where Peter dresses up in Daredevil's costume and makes an appearance in court while Matt is trying a case just to sort of debunk the theory that Matt is Daredevil. So they have each other's backs, it's just like a bromance and it's really long and sustained and they just really like to work together. So that is why we're getting this awesome classic Daredevil in this retro Spider-Man pack in case you weren't aware of that. So right off the bat, I do not have a Daredevil and the look of this Daredevil is so satisfying to me that this is the Daredevil I didn't realize that I wanted. Um, there are so many things to look at on this figure from the metallic plates on his armor, which by the way, hello Iron Man figures, why have we not had this as your costume so far? Look at how sexy that is. It just looks so shiny and so luminous. It's just really good looking. Um, he's got great use of vinyl that will not, before we even get into uh, the articulation does not obstruct the motion. It flexes and bends to give us our full range of motion. It's like somebody started listening to me in the middle of a series. <laughs> so I am really just so pleased. Let's just take one more look at the way that this daredevil looks. It's got his DD on his chest, which is so nice looking and it's, it's just so iconic, uh, the font of those. It looks so good. We've got nice armored suit. The sculpt on this is really nice. And as you'll see when we look at the figure, like it's put together well. Like it seems like all the TLC that I wanna see in all of my Marvel Legends figures was definitely put into this. He is impressive. He's just really kind of just satisfying to look at overall. I'm really, really happy with this, the way this figure looks. Let's talk about his accessories pack because this accessories pack is flawless. It is precisely what you would want for a daredevil. Every single piece makes sense and every single piece functions. So first of all, we have the Matt Murdock head out of costume with his glasses, his red glasses. He looks fantastic, bright red hair. The sculpt is really, really good. Um, I think the only thing, you know, I have to be critical because this is a review. The only thing that I would say is that there's no um, sort of like definition around his mouth, meaning like they could have like used a black line between his lips or maybe added some color to his lips. So there is sort of a flat countenance from the, the 
glasses down it really sort of just looks almost like it just popped out of the mold like this rather than being painted there could be a tiny bit of detail there but that is like a very nitpicky gripe I mean he even has these like incredible like red eyebrows you can see over his glasses so I mean to say that this isn't detailed enough while it may technically be true it could have a little bit more i am really satisfied with the way this head looks so that's one accessory he comes with his billy clubs that are um you know this is how they are disguised as his cane when he's in civilian clothes and they separate obviously and can be held in both hands they don't have a chain which is a little bit disappointing but um i mean they still work and that's so easy to fix like I'm not one who thinks that you should have to modify every single toy to get it exactly as you want, but if the modification is as simple as creating the chain, adding the chain that's going to go between these, I mean, you can pick that up at Hobby Lobby for like $2 and literally just clamp it on. You shouldn't have to do that, but it's really super easy and that's probably what I'll end up doing. So I'm happy with the Billy Clubs the way that they are. They look really good. Um, the only other thing that I might do is add some red or black detail to them um, if I were a painter, which I'm not. So um, I think that that might be something that people who customize their toys are looking for. It is a little flat as silver, but um, for the most part, I'm really, really happy with that accessory as well. Then he also comes with an alternate set of hands that come with um, alternate cuffs. So he's got these, um, these hands will hold his billy clubs and a cuff here like this. The reason he comes with those additional cuffs is because in his fist hands that are on him right now, the cuffs actually have the billy clubs attached to them. So it's a really cool mix of things that you can do with these accessories. You've got two sets of hands, two sets of wrist guards, um, two sets of billy clubs essentially. One is attached to wrist guards and one is, uh, you know, freestanding, and then two heads. The complete package of accessories on this makes so much sense and is so functional and usable in so many ways that you can mix and match them with heads, with accessories, with billy clubs, with hands. Uh, it just, it really impresses me and I'm super, super happy that they did that because, um, you know, Matt is a flexible character and not, I'm not just talking about physically flexible, but I'm talking about his fighting style, his crime fighting style. He is a man who works on the fly and being able to depict him with all different combinations of his weapon and abilities at play is I think kind of essential for him. So I'm really, really happy. I think that this is the best accessories pack that I've gotten probably not just in this line, definitely in this line, but maybe with a Marvel Legends figure in a long time. It's cohesive, it makes sense, it's functional, and everything works exactly the way that it's supposed to. So three cheers for this accessories pack. Now let's look at his articulate points. Uh, we didn't really take like a great close look at this particular head. Sorry, we need to get focused here. Um, but this is a really good looking Daredevil, guys. Look at the red eyes his horned hood. Um, there's also sort of a mattified effect to that hood that he's wearing that makes it look le like leather, which I really appreciate. And that metallic is so spot on that now I'm even more agitated about how hard it was for me to find a good Iron Man. And I have to say that the Iron Man that I ended up loving, Iron Man 2020, doesn't have this metallic paint effect and now I'm super disappointed again and I'm gonna go hunting because it's not as good. Why why aren't they doing it this way with all of their metallic figures? I was gonna try to pull up Iron Man but he's he's on the shelf so anyway so oh his hood everything just looks so good. So we've got 360 easy degrees. This head is super super flexible. He looks all the way down and he's got two whole clicks up. You can literally like make his head <laughs> lateral, which is too much. Let's be real. The neck doesn't look natural. It doesn't look real, but it's nice. I mean, if you were doing a top down photo, it would be nice to have him looking straight up and then the neck wouldn't be affected there. So we've got all of the range of motion that we need and a little bit more um, 
maybe it's overextended a little bit if that's a criticism and I don't know that it could be. Uh, then we've got his arms with a nice lateral lift. Now the shoulder pads do sort of like come back and bounce against it but if you work it a little bit you can definitely get the full um, you know 90 degrees that I always want to see. You have to sort of like work with it and like hold it in place, but it will stay. And that's because they put flexible shoulder pads on. Imagine that using a flexible piece of material on a joint so that the joint can still function. It's perfect. And you can see like if you sort of just put it up, this is where it will kind of like bend back and fall down to. But here's the one that I sort of like worked with a little bit and it stays up perfectly. So I couldn't be happier with that. That's how you know, shoulder armor should work on a highly articulate figure. When we get to his bicep, we've got 360 easy degrees. We've got a great double jointed elbow um, that does run into his bicep a little bit, but it's still a pretty good, um, a pretty good bend there. I'm happy with it. The wrists turn 360 degrees, and they have a forward and backward bend that actually function and I think the reason they work so well is because the cuffs, his wrist guards, um, are separate pieces. So as you're trying to adjust the forward and backward motion of his wrist, the cuff just sort of shifts up and it just ends up working perfectly. So we have no obstruction at all in the wrist. And that is with the cuff and billy club, which I would think would be the one that would obstruct the most. So great movement throughout the arms. I'm really, really happy with these shoulder pads that do not obstruct the motion in his shoulders. Moving on to the torso, we have, which let's just look at that armor again. It's so good looking, this costume, you guys. That metallic paint is flawless and the color is so sharp. It just looks really, really good. So we've got a great bow forward. That's almost 90 degrees, which is nice and backwards. I think that's pretty good. You know, um, as I've said in the past, really it doesn't take very much for that, that to, to photograph dramatically and to look dramatic on film or whatever you happen to be doing, whatever pose you happen to have them in. So um, the, the back bend is a little bit less dramatic, but it still works for me. I'm happy with it. We have a 360 degree, degrees clicky turn waist. You can hear that. So we're getting a really good range of motion with a lot of stopping points. He is a little bit loose in the torso, and I know that I keep saying that, but I'm gonna keep pointing it out as long as it keeps happening. If we're using this size body and it's always loose, um, let's do something to fix that. And I got a comment on my last video that was like, well, just don't shake it. And I know that that was tongue in cheek teasing. Um, and that's true, you know, and, and like I said, you know, I've got these figures on my shelf and I love the way that they look. And when you don't shake them, it's not a huge deal unless you're doing action poses. This is the literal center of gravity for the entire figure. So everything that you do around it, the way that you pose the leg, the way that you pose the arm, the way that you pose every portion of the body relies on the stability of this area. So if it's wobbly, you're not gonna be able to get a great pose on one leg. Um, he's just not stable enough. A breeze blows and your guy goes down because he doesn't have the stability in his waist that he needs. This one, I will say, is not nearly as bad as my Morph and my Sunfire. It's very slight, but it's still there and it needs to stop happening. It needs to be fixed so that we can get the most out of these figures. The lateral lift on this is one of the best I've seen in a minute. It's still not complete, but it looks really good. We've got 360 degrees in the thigh, which I should move the arm so you can see. There we go. The knees are great. I have been having not very many issues with the knees lately. So the knees are always fine. The feet are always fine these days. So we've got a uh, perfect motion backward and forward on the toe and then that great flexible ball and socket joint on the ankle. So the points of articulation on this figure are are perfect and I feel like the sculptural elements of the costume work with the articulate points. Thinking about the way 
that the costume is going to work with the mechanism of the toy is something that you think should just happen at the beginning design phase, but it clearly isn't. And I'm learning more that the design phase is all of these phases of production are sourced differently. So there's an appearance phase, like where they decide what the figure is going to look like. Then an articulation phase where somebody does that design and then everything gets produced. So it's kind of no wonder that seems really dissonant to me, a kind of process, a, a disconnected process. If we bring all of those together in the first phase of the game, then we won't have these little hiccups here and there. But overwhelmingly, I think that they have done more for this figure than they have in the past. And I'm super, super happy to see that because this is new. So I like to look at it as the company moving in a positive direction toward getting that consistency and um, that cohesiveness that we all really want to see. I think it's going to happen. I'm looking forward to it. So I just want to take another quick look at the paintwork that they've used on this figure. Um, we didn't really look at the silver at all because I was so amped on the red, but this silver is sparkling. Look at how lustrous it looks. The metallics on this figure are unrivaled, I have to say, right now in my collection. I Even my Iron Patriot, which I love so much, makes use of that marbleized glittery plastic rather than good paintwork. Um, and to me, you just can't beat good paintwork. And this is a great example of that. The silver accents are lustrous. They are metallic. The red is metallic. It's deep and vibrant. And the black looks like leather. So everything about this costume is, um, it contrasts itself. So the material, you see different materials and they contrast itself. It works together in a way that makes sense. The armor moves with the body. It's like a revelation. But honestly, if we're not seeing that, I'm going to keep talking about it until we get it all the time because this figure looks stunning and works so well. I honestly, the things that I've pointed out that could be a little bit better, a little bit different, I was almost loath to do that because this figure is so satisfying and so good. And I'm going to put him up there with one of my best of the year for Marvel Legends so far because he is absolutely what he is supposed to look like. He's got the flexibility to do the things that Daredevil does. He was obviously um, sort of lovingly created as far as the paintwork and the styling of this figure went. And he's a success. He looks great on the shelf and I cannot wait to see what he looks like next to Spider-Man, which is our final figure in this series, you guys. So Daredevil is a win for me. Daredevil is a win all the way around. I will use all of his accessories. I'll probably modify his billy clubs a little bit just so they have a chain between them. And I'm not mad about that at all. I'm excited to do it actually. So I have to give this the best marks I've given any of the figures in this line, including my Green Goblin, which I love so much. This figure is the most satisfying, the best executed, the best looking, and I am super, super excited. If I only have one Daredevil, that it's this guy. So with all that said, we have gotten through so many toys, and I feel like we're getting to a point now where we're seeing some really great things. This retro Spider-Man line is probably one of my favorite, and not just because I'm a huge Spider-Man fan, but because I feel like Hasbro is doing great things with it, and I think that we should be excited. Of course, we want everything to be perfect all the time, and that can't always happen, but I can see them making strides in the right direction, and that's really encouraging for me. And I think that we should look at that and feel positive and feel excited for the things to come, because there's some really great things on the horizon, at least pre-order-wise. I'm really hopeful about the things that I have on the way. So that is that on Daredevil. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and for watching all of my reviews. If you are subscribed to my channel, thank you personally for being an encouraging part of this process for me. I'm so grateful to you. 801 subscribers is shocking and surprising and wonderful and I'm gonna keep going and we will keep making these videos. So have a great day, friends. I'm gonna do another one tomorrow. Let me know what you wanna see in the Age of Apocalypse line and I'll do that one next and I will be back tomorrow with another one for you. Thanks, friends, bye.